Hi, this is Nicole Permelli, Superintendent of Jackson Schools. And this message is for the families of high school students. We are ready to provide you with an update to advancing our instruction at the high school to five days of in-person instruction. As always, our goal has been to create an environment this year that is safe, meets all of the mandates of the New Jersey Restart and Recovery requirements, is responsive to our community needs, is feasible at, within the constraints of our buildings and responsive to all of our community. Why are we looking for more in-person learning? Well, why is it important? I'm sure you all agree with me and feel this, that virtual and synchronous learning is difficult for many learners. Consistency of instruction is crucial for academic growth, Engagement and learning is decreasing tremendously as the year goes on, and social skills are critical to students' growth, particularly in the middle school and the high school years. And the mental health of our students is continuing to suffer. It is important that we begin to get them phased back in as much as possible for in-person learning in a safe way. So planning for more in-person instruction, we have been watching the data and the conditions carefully to have full understanding of all of the trends in our area and within our district. We follow the New Jersey and Ocean County Health Department guidelines and protocols as we also look at our district data. The Department of Education Road and Recovery Guidelines has always informed our planning here in the district from the fall until now, and it continues to inform everything that we do in the district. We are looking to com combine hybrid groups one and two learners moving forward. Through this combination of these students, we do the district does remain committed to the health and the safety of our staff and our students. Our school times will remain the same, shortened days will continue, and that will be followed by virtual check-ins in the afternoon while the students are home. Our AB schedule, however, will resume to a normal schedule um, once this hybrid combining of group one and two takes place. That means, for example, Monday would be a day A, Tuesday would be a day B, et cetera, and moving forward. Lunch will continue to be a grab and go at the end of the day. Our timeline to begin this shift in offering five half days of in-person learning, we have a tentative date of April 19th. That tentative date will be dependent on monitoring our current elementary and middle schools as they have returned to five days in person. And we will continue to monitor the number of COVID cases in the district as that date approaches. We'll particularly be watching carefully after spring break, the week after spring break, um, and reviewing that data carefully. If data demonstrates an increase in cases, we will pause the April 19th date. So we will make sure that we stay in communication with all of our families. We will be asking our families to fill out a form to indicate if they do not want to have their, their students attend for five in-person days during the week. If a student, in that form, you need to submit that you would be a full, your child would be a full synchronous learner then. And that form will be coming out soon. Announcing the April 19th date now allows for you to prepare for this, to have discussion at home and determine whether you want your child in for five in-person learning days or to stay full synchronous. It also allows our schools to prepare, make sure things are safe, our transportation department, and of course our food service department as well. I do wanna emphasize the importance of consistency of instruction in this plan. Um, it has been definitely a difficult year for everybody and we recognize that. We really need to ensure that we have our students either in front of us for five days of instruction or full synchronous um, for five days of instruction. A back and forth, um, in and out of in-person is not good for learning and academic growth. It's also not good for mental health. So we are asking our families to please emphasize with your students, your children, that they need, they need to either be in for five full days or full synchronous for five days. Back and forth is very difficult for learning, academic growth, mental health, and also difficult um, to prepare for. Quite frankly, the students may not have the materials they need in front of them. As I said, there will be a form going out to indicate that shortly. The only time that we would be um, obviously make an exception to that would be if somebody is not feeling well, has symptoms of COVID, has been quarantined, been exposed to COVID or has COVID themselves. If they are well enough, they certainly can log in synchronously to learn from home in those cases. Otherwise, we should see students in our classrooms if they have committed to a five day of instructional um, period during a week. 
Safety always remains our first priority. We will continue with all of the health and safety protocols we have in place, including face covering, um, being worn by all of our student and staff. Um, there will be less face covering breaks um, due to that, but we will um, all be wearing them and the students as well. We ask that the daily form continues to be filled out each day in person. That is important and crucial to our plan. There will be seating charts in our classrooms as um, we will need to do uh, in-depth contact tracing as we currently have. Um, it is likely we may see some more quarantines of, um, if in a classroom since we have more students in a classroom. The students have been sitting about six feet apart um, for the most part, but again, the New Jersey Department of Guidelines does say um, to six feet to the maximum extent possible. It's not a requirement for the six feet, so there will be less social distancing available in our classrooms with this return of five days for group one and group two. As I said, all of our cleaning protocols will continue, our hand washing, our social distancing to the greatest extent possible, um, including on our buses. Um, it's again, to the greatest extent possible. We will continue with the cleaning of desks between each period, and we will continue with our in-depth contact tracing if there is a positive case within our schools and our classrooms. Um, please note with more students in, it is more likely that we would be putting maybe more students out on quarantine or even full classroom out on quarantine. So we've been asked a lot of questions about um, why are we not full day. Um, so I want you to, to understand a little bit about why those decisions are made. Currently right now we are not in a full day uh, learning model for any of our levels for two reasons. One is the lunch. Um, and you'll see that across all other um, you know Ocean County schools in many cases if you especially if you're a big district we simply cannot provide enough space for students to eat at the required distance. They must be at least six feet if they're taking their face covering off and eating lunch. And with these restrictions, we simply do not have enough supervision to offer enough small group lunch periods for students to eat lunch. Additionally, as you know, we are a large town, 100 square miles, and our busing system, um, we have to rely on a multi-tiered busing system to have our students get to each of their schools at their correct times and get dismissed at their correct times. So with that, it makes it very difficult to have one school level, um, perhaps on a different um, schedule than um, another school level. Therefore, it's very difficult for us to do that and restore a full day. We're hopeful maybe in the near future, perhaps those restrictions of lunch will be uh, reduced and we'll be able to offer that. But for now, that is um, the reason why we are still on a partial day. As I mentioned, um, we will continue to monitor our elementary and our middle schools um, and any upticks that might occur during spring break and we may need to pause this. Um, but it is important that we follow that, we look at that. We've left the high school to be our last phase within bringing in more in-person learning simply because um, his Historically, when you look at the district data, we've had the most cases at the high school level. As you can imagine, the um, high school students are more social, um, they're more involved in more activities, therefore we've had an, a higher number of positive cases at our high schools. We have begun to see that decrease, so that's why we're making this announcement and hopefully we'll be on track um, for April 19th. We will need your help in moving forward with this plan, so if you can please continue to do all of the um, you know, hard work on your end, reminding your students to stay home if they're sick, if they have symptoms, um, please fill out those daily health screening forms. That's a requirement that we have to follow here. So we, we greatly appreciate you filling those out before your children get to school. Um, obviously remember all of the health protocols that are in place for all of us for the last year. And please notify our nurse if you have anybody in your family um, who has been exposed so we know who needs to perhaps quarantine or if anybody tests positive in your household. So please communicate with our nurses as well. So again, as I mentioned, uh, we'll be putting out a form very shortly to all of you to indicate if your child will be um, in high school for five shortened days during a week for instruction beginning April 19th, or if they will be learning full synchronous that's five days at home um, via synchronous learning through their computers. Um, so we do ask that you complete that form by March 31st so that we can be prepared in our schools. Our administrators and teachers um, need to prepare for uh, the number of students who will be joining us for the in-person learning. 
I do wanna take this opportunity to thank our high school staff, our teachers, administrators, our custodians, our nurses, our secretaries, everybody. Um, everybody has been working hard. Um, we've had several shifts in our learning models as we've moved forward throughout the year and everybody has worked extremely hard for the benefit of students. So thank you to all of them and thank you to all of you families for supporting us as it's been a difficult year across the board. So we look forward and are hopeful that we can see uh, more students in our buildings come April 19th. So thank you for your cooperation and thank you for filling out the form in a timely fashion. And take care.